Do you know how to find the value of x in this infinite sequence? Let me show you. Nice. So we are taking 2 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x, 8 to the power of x, 16 to the power of x, all the way up to infinity. Now, what you should notice is that all of these numbers are powers of 2. <laughs> so we're going to rewrite 4 as 2 squared, 8 as 2 cubed, 16 as 2 to the power of 4, etc. Now, what do you notice? What you should notice is that to go from term to term, we are multiplying by the same thing. And that thing is 2 to the power of x. We are multiplying by 2 to the power of x. And I'll show you why. If you take 2 to the power of x and you multiply it by 2 to the power of x, what are you doing? You're adding the powers using our index rules because the base is the same. So we're left with 2 to the power of x plus x, which is 2x, which gives you this term. And if you take 2 to the power of 2x, multiply it by 2 to the power of x, you add the powers, you get 2 to the power of 3x, which is this term. So it works. Nice. When we sum the terms in a sequence, whereby going from term to term is multiplication, we call that a geometric sequence. And to sum an infinite number of terms, we take the first term and divide it by 1 minus the term that we are multiplying by. We call that the common ratio. In this case, our first term is 2 to the power of x divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is also 2 to the power of x. We're equating that to 1. Multiply through by this denominator, we get 2 to the power of x is 1 minus 2x. Move this to this side. We're going to have two lots of the same thing. Two lots of the same thing equals 1. Nice. So to rearrange for x, we're going to divide by 2 on both sides. Cancel. 2 to the power of x is a half. 2 to the power of what is a half? Well, all we've done is reciprocated the number 2. So the power needs to be minus 1. Noise. Follow me for more content like this.